Yay! Hello, everybody. We're doing it. We're, We're really, doing it. First We're one. We're really doing it, aren't we? <laughs> I, what am I doing here? I have no idea. So, I brought my own Coke from the house. Do you like it? <laughs> I did. Don't tell the bar. I, the same place. Yeah. Sean, are we ready to? We're we ready to go and record. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to another episode of Cork and the Rock Podcast. This is our Christmas special episode. Thanks to everybody that's come in. We are live from the Sunflower. <laughs> This is, our, this is our first ever live uh, comedy podcast. I've never done a live, I've not even done a live comedy podcast on anyone's ed- other podcast before, and I'm fucking shitting myself. Because uh, I've seen who follows the podcast now, and we're cancelling the podcast. Uh, people from Tyrone and Antrim, we can't, we're, not, we're not looking for those type of people. But yes, my co-host here, Aaron Butler, our regular co- co-host who's back from Garden Leaf, the HR issue has been resolved. And uh, it's good to see you back. Now, Aaron, we haven't seen each other for about two weeks because you've been away, I've been away. That's right. We're, we, well, we're well-travelled men. We're, we're very well-travelled. I just spent 10 tell. days in Dubai doing shows. Oh, fuck. Give me a cheer if you've been to Dubai. Oh, wow. Oh, fuck, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <Okay. laughs> this is not my crowd oh, for yeah. Dubai material. Go ahead. Hit them if you're relatable bit there, Andrew. <laughs> oh, oh. You I know what it's oh, like, guys, what? in Dubai, don't you? Fucking hell. £14 a pint, lads. You couldn't do it. <laughs> So I went, to, I went to Dubai to do shows and I had a fucking... I swear to God, if you've not, you've not been to... I was going to say, if you've not no, been to Dubai... No, they haven't, we know. I know that. They haven't been to Dubai, Andrew. But go ahead and tell them anyway. Have you sure. been to Dublin? Have yeah. you been to Dublin? <laughs> right. Yeah. So basically, went to Dubai to do gigs. Been to Dubai a few times before. Doing gigs to Irish people, British people, Scott, everything. And absolutely fucking mental place to go, right, to do gigs. Uh, too hot. Doesn't suit Irish people, right? You can't just enjoy anything. That's <laughs> no, your I problem. I just can't. For, oh, it's lovely I, and warm, and there's a fucking pair of daddies in my face. Just yeah. fucking I can't, enjoy. I, I genuinely cannot enjoy life anymore, right? <laughs> we were staying. We were staying in. We stayed in this hotel. They put us in this five-star hotel called the Moven Pick on JBR, and there was three rooms. They gave us a suite, right? I, I was on my own, and they gave us a suite. And basically, I was like, "Well, I'm never going to go into that room." Mm. So well, and what, what was the room you weren't going to go into? It was the lounge. There was a lounge. I was like, I'm not going to go in there. Why? So why would they give me a room with another a bedroom with an extra room? But that's a suite, Andrew. Yeah, but that's I don't want a suite. For. It's no, too you much do choice. want a suite. Why it's won't too you want much a fucking choice. Why too much choice? Oh, I have more rooms. You privileged bastard. Just for if it was me, I'd be in all the rooms every as Malone. With your big be. vasectomy, willy. Like you know you what I mean? Like you know. <laughs> oh, it's big, all right. The, the, uh, the vasectomy, not the willy. Uh, I've had the biggest vasectomy. But I, 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 do you know what? I did it, and I, I, I met a lot of Irish people out there, and w- w- they were so lovely and so polite. But do you know what the mad thing about it was? They told me that they all missed about, you know, they'd been out in Dubai five, six years teaching English or working as nurses or engineers and stuff like that. They all said that they, they missed uh, local Irish things, you know, like going okay. to your local pub, knowing the same bar person. Uh, kind of go down to the shop, knowing the same people, because like every day in Dubai is like a is like your first day all the time. Yeah, bonfires and, and all they miss all those. They miss all the bonfires, miss all the bonfires. <laughs> you know, just the it. local things. Just, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. The flags all over the place, the murals, like the palettes. Yeah, 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 the, yeah the lack of it. government we really miss yeah. that one. The DNHS staff that hate their job. <laughs> yeah. You know, like all that yeah. kind of stuff. The wee guy in the center playing a fiddle, but it's also a flute. Yeah. Like the miss. <laughs> They miss him. They miss the <laughs> mental health advisors that are telling people where bridges are. Like, it's absolutely mental, you know. That's the stuff that they miss. Like. Just, yeah. Oh, Dubai shit, isn't it? Oh, yeah, shit, the, man. Yeah, yeah, And uh, I, had, I, had, I had this thing out there. This is a true story now. I saw my future out there, right? Which Because if you know me now, you know... Would you go see a psychic? No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do an E or something in Dubai? And then be like, <laughs> I'm seeing it. What? So <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, right? Yeah, how did you see your future? Tell everybody. Right. So we were doing this gig and uh, we had an after party in a pub called, in a place called the Irish Village, right? And there was loads of the football matches were on. So the kickoff was at 10 o'clock in Doha, 11 o'clock in Dubai. So uh, there was one match on. Uh, uh, Morocco were playing one of the games and we went in and there was a guy. He looked, at, he looked exactly like me, but he was about 55. <laughs> Right, and I thought that could be me. Now, he, were you he, looking at a mirror? Because I wasn't looking at a mirror. Honestly, no, it could I, have been. I'm trying to be serious on this podcast for once. Sorry, right? sorry. Okay, sorry. And I saw this guy. He looked like me. He fucking look. He looked like Dougal as well. Right, and I was like, <laughs> right. I swear to God, I was like, what the hell is this going on? <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, right. 
<laughs> and he was on a date. He was on a date with this girl with who must have been about 25. What? He must, she must have been about 25, okay. right? And we saw it happening on like this table. We're sitting here and we see it over there. And at one point, he was about 55. He, he was talking to the girl and I overheard him say to the girl, he was uh, American or Canadian. And he goes, uh, I'm looking for real love, you know? <laughs> and was he a country singer from Alabama? What <laughs> I the don't f- know where he was from. Andrew can't do accents, we've learned in the last <laughs> week. But keep good. This accent will change eight times in the next hour. <laughs> At one point he does Borat, trust me. It's good. The, the <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so, so the Canadian I, person? <laughs> Go he ahead. was Canadian or American, I don't know which one he was. But he was just looking at this girl and she, he, he was like, I'm looking for real love. <laughs> right? And um, that's his bit, that's his one line he can do. <laughs> right? And he was about 55, she was about 25. Now that's none of my business. That's none of my, if she was, I, that's none of my business what's going on there. But I thought, fucking hell, I could be 55. Living in Dubai, going on trying to go on dates with twenty-five-year-olds mm. and looking at them, going, "I'm looking, I'm looking for real love now," you know, like right. <laughs> and I just get the feeling I was like, and I, I've gone through. If you've listened to the podcast, like you know, like my 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 feelings on like getting married, and having kids. But I tell you something, I decided out there. I thought, "Fuck it, I can't be him." Right. I can't be fifty-five out in fucking the, the Middle East. Why? Look, looking at women. Why? Going, I, I'm looking for you. Like you know, I couldn't be doing it. Like. I, know you, I, know I don't see fault. what's wrong here so far. Yeah, no, no, he's but, living the best fucking life. He's not, though. He's got some fucking... He's had to leave his own country to meet a woman. Like, do you know what I mean? He's had to go... Like, I, I couldn't Did do he it. have to leave? No, obviously, he, he looked like he had to fucking leave. Because he's gone through all the other 25 rows in Canada and America. <laughs> Aaron, my point is this. Sorry. I basically... Um, Saw that and I went, fucking hell, I don't want to be 55 trying okay. to meet people for the first time. Do you know that kind of way? Right. I want to be 55 to have like uh, people around me that I know. Because in <laughs> Dubai, people are very isolated out there. They're away from their families and stuff. Hmm. All the Irish and British and all that kind of stuff and the, whatever. And I thought, oh, geez, I don't want to be 55 like fucking living in Belfast. Not, nothing like, like living here, but, when, but on my own. Do you know that kind of way? So then I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to change my mindset. And then we fl- I flew home this morning and... This little fucking kid on the plane behind me. Ah. And then I changed my mindset back to the original mindset. You're the 55-year-old guy. I now want to be a 55-year-old man going on dates with 25-year-old women going, I'm looking for real love now. How are things? (laughs) I swear to God, this little fucking shit. And he was ugly as well. He was an ugly kid. Yeah. Right? So He was an ugly kid? An ugly kid. I'd say that, Andre. I'd say the parents were gutted, like, you know what I mean, right? (laughs) Like, he was proper ugly as fuck as well, right? Couldn't get a pedo to touch him. I go. That oh. sort of ugly. I'd say the 55-year-old would be like, I'm looking for real love, right? But i tell you what happened. I checked in at the airport, right? I checked in at the airport tomorrow. I was flying Emirates back to Dublin, and I Googled the weather in Dublin uh, the other day, and I realised they'd cancelled 30 flights from Dublin. I thought, oh, Jesus. And then I messaged you, and you were like, I fucking knew this was going to happen, right? So I checked in, and I, when I got up to the Emirates uh, thing at 2 o'clock this morning in, in Dubai, I said to the lovely lady, I said, how are you? I'm looking for real love. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> right, is there any chance I can get an aisle seat? Yeah. And then she flipped the screen round, the check-in lady, she script, flipped the screen round, she goes, there's no aisle seats available. I went, oh, you're fucking kidding me. Mm. I said, uh, now, as a bit of a, an ego thing, I went, all right, go on, how much is the upgrade to, to business? I would never pay that. Can right? I guess? Can I guess? I, I the complain upgrade? about the price of everything. Okay. Can I guess the upgrade? Because as you know, I have flown. You have flown business, business with yeah. Emirates. Yeah, go on, tell it. Go on. Was it five k? Bang on five k. That's a guy that's flown business, mother. You know I mean? Up of fucking hoods. That is very good. Well done. Up the I fuck. near said something else there, but up I'm the glad I didn't because he would have been angry at me. Up the hoops. <laughs> so she gave it to me for fifty euro. No, she didn't. No way. Uh, no, she didn't. The money yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> not a fucking chance. I told her I was looking for real love. And she yeah. said, you're staying, you're staying in economy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> she charged you 50 to stay in economy. <laughs> right. So anyway, I said, there's no well seat. She goes, no, but what I can do is there's a fire exit seats available. Um, I, but you have to pay for them. And I was like, how much is that? And she goes, they're 400 dirhams. And I thought, oh, here we go. So to go to the phone typed in 400 oh, dirhams to GBH it. or whatever to British pounds. GBH? Get her book. <laughs> get bucked her? GBH. GBH. Hey, you can tell called. he's from fucking court, can you like? Uh, fuck's sake. GP. Did the he's pounds. still using puns for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's fucking it's losing. The pounds, like. <laughs> Do you know what? Uh, so it was 80 quid. 
Did you pay it? I paid the 80 quid as a worth treat. Worth it. Worth every penny. So I got three seats to myself Lovely. on a fire exit. And I thought I'll be able to lie down on the seats. But it was one of those, you know, where the TV is actually in the sides. No, Dad, don't like that. And now. you can't lift them up to lie down. Ah, that's shy. Right? So then I thought, right, and then the fucking family of three behind me. And I swear easy. to God, this evil <laughs> fucking Ted Bundy wannabe. Right? The kid, the kid? Oh, he must have been about three. And back of my head... He was just doing that all the time, right? And I, so I moved from the middle seat because I went when I got onto the plane. I said I'm going to sit in the middle and do my arms like that, so no one comes in, right? Why aren't you so just I paid normal? 80 quid, like, you know what I mean? Huh? <laughs> why aren't you just normal? Why do <laughs> why why is your stories never involved? Just I got a flight to Dubai and everything went perfect. <laughs> I know. There's always some mishap in uh, Andrew's travel experience. And, and Joe, the mad thing is somebody who listens to the podcast sent me in an email last week thinking, I've been watching your stand-up and your podcast and I think you've got autism, <laughs> right? I sent it, to be fair. I did. Like, <laughs> this woman she goes, like, I see how angry you get at such small things if you thought about being tested for ADHD and autism. And I was just sitting there, I was reading the email, so I sent it to you. And you replied, well, should we all knew anyway? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> She so was I just replied and goes, I don't have autism of AIDS. And um, <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't uh, say he that. Got it from me. <laughs> he got uh, it from me. Uh, <laughs> so this little fucker behind me on the plane today, man, he's banging the thing. And I was like, oh, fucking. So I moved seat from the middle to the left. And about 10 minutes later, didn't the fucking baby move to the left? Oh. I thought the little fucker's following me, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He may have liked you. You know? He may have uh, looked at you and went, he, he's looking for love. <laughs> 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 I mean, 55 got up to all the kids on the plane going, hey, yeah, I'm looking for love. You just yeah, said right. earlier you all surrounded by like kids and family and stuff. Now you have it and you're fucking getting me no, out of it. No, but you know what? There was a load, there was a load of other Irish families coming back and they were they had like small kids. And obviously it's very difficult to fly if you've got a child. Where are but, people getting this money from? That's why I'd love I to know. Yeah, but I, I've come up with a policy, a government policy that I think I, think you, I don't know if you'd back this now, right? If you have a baby, you're not allowed to fly with a child until the child is five years old plus. Yeah. Give me a chair if you support that policy. Andrew for Taoiseach. Yes. Andrew for Taoiseach. DUP. DUP. I don't even know. No, no, fucking. No. Yeah, okay. boo them. Ah, boo yeah. them the fuck. Yes, the United Ireland's coming. It's coming. <laughs> the cult has started. Fucking, yes, I love it. So anyway, anyway basically, uh, yeah, that was it. Dubai was good crack. It was good. But <laughs> yeah. the people are, were awful. The but people were no, awful? Just, no, the people are lovely, but just every, people are too slow in queues. Like, the food, we were going for food. But you can't say people are lovely and then call them slow, Andrew. They're, like, they're, they're, they're <laughs> no, they're lovely people, but they're right. just too slow. Like You want life to move a bit faster over just, in Dubai? Just like, they're enjoying their life out there. You should be be doing things. You don't want them to enjoy their life? No, but they're enjoying it, but they're like, they're like going to the counter and taking too, taking too long to pay. And <laughs> like, you know, all that kind of stuff. I yeah. said, like, I, you know, and then one thing that annoyed me then was my fucking hotel room card key tapped my phone. So I went up to the 16th floor, put the key in, the fucking red light came on. I had to go back down to reception. you all had that? I had to go back down to reception to get I've the key redone that. again. Never happened to you? No, so you, the, the hotel key touches your phone. And and it then... touches your phone. It's like a sensor on the phone. Isn't that right? And it deactivates the key. Sorry, I, just, I stay in a lot of hotels, are No, I know. So do um, I, but the, the ones I'm in are so higher class that that wouldn't happen with the key. But no, it's... Oh, it's no, you have an actual old key. No, like, no, you know I, I, mean? like, I, like... I actually have a guy that opens it for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't even <laughs> worry about that process. Is that the same fella that opens your ass at the same time as well? That's that is. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> oh, this podcast has taken an awful turn, like. Oh, that's what happens. So where were you the last few weeks? I was in Switzerland for <laughs> dementia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I was in... It's, 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 it's very cold over there. It's colder here than it is in Switzerland. It was very snowy over there, I imagine. But it's minus eight over there, right? Which is cold. But then you come here and the wind is stronger here. It's, it's very wind chilly here in, in, in Ireland. As, yeah. as Wonder what I was going to say there. The 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 no. The, uh, yeah, but down. they're used. They're used. They're used to like what meters of stones. Switzerland airports, right, are silent. Silent. When you go in, like, there's no music over the speakers. There's no announcements. You would love it. It's just quite. It's pace. It's like being a. Fucking, but then I was thinking because they have, as we've discussed before, dignitas there, right? <laughs> if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's where you fly to Switzerland to kill yourself legally, right? One we're way we're bringing Andrew next year, so we are. <laughs> the, the <laughs> but I'll only go if there's no kids on the plane. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to. I don't want to be annoyed like on the way to my own death. You know what I mean? Like, I want a peaceful run. No, 
No kids on a plane be a movie star and you so yeah, would. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson. Idea, no kids. Yeah. I'm sick and tired of these motherfucking kids. Uh, the the so yeah, I go to. Do you know why yeah. that is in Switzerland? Is because they've, they've no personality. Switzerland. Do you think there's no crack out of them? Like they are a wee bit, as you would call, maybe bland. No, but they're split into different. Uh, there's the Swiss French section. Then yes. you have the Italian. I was in the Italian section. Yeah. And you have the German part of Switzerland. Oh, then go there. The fuck that. Like, the, fucking, the lads are still partying up there. <laughs> they haven't got the news yet. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I was going to say something there, and I just thought, yeah, no, you know, I'm not going to. There are reports like... playing Kanye West albums <laughs> on loop. <laughs> 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 Work it harder. So, do you? What are you? What were you doing there anyway? I, I was, well, I was meant to go work there and then... Keynote speaking. I was doing a bit of keynote speaking, as you know, because I'm dabbling in that at the minute. And uh, <laughs> so I'm at a conference for uh, scientists win. or whatever. Yeah, winners win. And um, <laughs> that's us getting sued now, the, uh, the fuck's sake. But there's my... Uh, here's what happened. It's right. So, right. I'm in, I'm in a lovely hotel, the Radisson Blue established hotel. Right? It's, all right. it's up in the Alps, Okay. Has a sauna and a health suite and all this sort of stuff there. I say to myself, I've got a free day here. Go down to the sauna, use the spa facilities. Oh, just have a nice little time. You know what I mean? Sweat it out a wee bit. Have a, have a nice chilled time. Go down to the sauna. Lady on the reception desk sees I'm in my swim shorts, I'm in my robe. She goes, take shorts off, please. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what? She goes, shorts must come off, please. And I was like, fair what? play, fair play. And, and, I, and I was... <laughs> and I... And I was, I was like taken back. I was like, "Why the fuck? Can I not just go in my shorts?" Because no, no, we we only do naked sauna here, right? And I went, I went naked. And she goes, she goes, yes. And this was her reason for having to get naked. She goes, "You don't feel full health benefit you wearing <laughs> shorts. <laughs> full health benefit? Do I need to steam out my dick to fucking like what? <laughs> so, so in my head, I'm looking at her, going, "What a fucking." cheeky but like this is my I was getting angry I was like I can't believe like this is not fair you shouldn't have to do it like you should be fucking have a choice blah blah and then as I was thinking that over her shoulder was the most cracking set of daddies I've ever seen in my life <laughs> and I thought I should be open to new stuff like I should be <laughs> like I, I'm in Europe like I may as well so fucking cacks came off and uh, first time you've been in the EU since 2016 <laughs> oh. like, so, 20 or whatever it is no we're did still you, in did it. you go in balls naked like went in deck out just thought here we are we're doing it so I went in now you, almost like a teenage boy's fantasy when I went into the sauna there was three lean, beautiful Eastern women, totally naked in the sauna. Fair and play, I, and, fair I, and, play. I, and I'm going, fucking yes, this is the best day of my life, right? Ten minutes, I'm in there. When I first go in there, I'm sitting in the sauna like this, right? And I'm trying to like, like I'm just, I'm just trying to be caught. Ten minutes in, I'm, I'm like this. And I'm fucking, and I'm making small talk with ladies. <laughs> so I'm, try, I'm trying to like get chat goals, like, people. All I'm this just looking like. for real love, you know? Uh, <laughs> 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 But then, <laughs> then what happens is, I'm thinking this great, there's no more fellas here. The most beautiful, tall, oh, yeah. muscly, European. For this guy must have been on all the steroids in the world, right? <laughs> Fucking chiseled an inch of his life oh. with the dick of all dicks on him. I mean... <laughs> This, it was rude. This fucking dick was rude. <laughs> he, he, wa he walked in, I looked at and I went, not even the sun is heating that full thing up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and he's going to have to rotate that if he wants full fucking. And the cheeky bastard sat next to me. And I, I was sitting next to him. And I was like, look at my own dick. Like, oh, this, it's like it's bad crap. I, I had to just leave the sauna there. And I had to just be like, you, you win. <laughs> I like, have, have a good, you, you get the girls. You know it's, what I mean? That's not healthy to look that good. Yeah, I don't think it's healthy because yeah. I I remember I was in I was in Copenhagen and I walked into a clothes shop to buy some clothes and I saw the most gorgeous looking fella in the <laughs> world. I this was years ago. I walked in. I looked at him. Said he's he's too good looking. Mm. This, that's not right. It is. It's it's so it's not fair. I went up to him and I went. I actually said to him. I said, "Why are you so good looking? <laughs> like how are you how how did how did this happen? And what did he say back? He just looked at me. He's like, "What what are you on about?" And I went, "But you're very you're you're good looking like." <laughs> How, 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 how is it like? Is it good? Did you get a lot of girls? And he was like, hey, it's, you know, it's fine. And I was like, okay, cool. I won't be buying anything, but all the best anyway. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not giving him my money. 
Yeah. He doesn't need my money. He's got his looks. Some... Scandinavians, though, they've got great bone structure. But Switzerland, I got, I got sick in Switzerland, but right. it's a very expensive country. Oh, super. You wouldn't like it? Oh, Not for you. Oh, I fucking listen. I find it hard going out in Hollywood. <laughs> like, <laughs> Don't we all? £3.20 for a latte in Hollywood now. And have, no, fuck it. I'm going Newton Arts. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I get it for 280 Newton Arts, but the petrol's only about 15p. So, like, you know what I mean? So, it balances itself out in the end. Like, you know, do you have a coffee up in West Belfast then? Oh, fuck. Do you, it's not coffee they're giving you. They pay you to take it. It's bovril. <laughs> it's, they're just going, it's oxtail soup with milk. Right? That's, that's, that's all that is. Like, you know? Oh, fuck. Yeah. But yeah, so we be, it's good to be back, though. It is. I'm very happy to have been to be back in Belfast, actually. Um, I'm, yeah. going, well, I'm, I, I'm going to Cork for Christmas. Great. But <laughs> think it through. Think it through. Use your indoor voice, all good. Okay. You're a big, big boy. I don't like Christmas, I'm going to tell you why, right? Yep. I, I hate everything about most things. And, um, <laughs> but the problem is, so Christmas, I, obviously I don't, uh, I, I only, I have, to, I have to get invited somewhere. I'm one of these guys that, you know, you have to invite me because otherwise I'd be on my own, right? And so I have two brothers and one sister. And one of my, my other brother, Emmett, he goes to Spain every year. He's a cyclist. So he goes to Spain. He cycles in the mountains. He, we, we don't like Christmas because we've, uh, you know, we've only got, like, it, it's complicated. <laughs> and um, we're, just, oh, wow. we're, all, we're all autistic, you know. And uh, that's just the way it is. So I was down at my brother's house uh, a couple of weeks ago. And I said to my brother's wife, who's lovely, Kate, said to me, uh, Andrew, what are you doing for the Christmas? Knowing full well, I'm fucking going nowhere, right? <laughs> And I said, oh, sure, I'll, I'll be at home, right, on my own. I'm just kind of like waiting for the... And I go, what are you doing for Christmas? She goes, oh, we're going to Kira's. Kira's my sister. She goes, I goes, oh, brilliant. Have a, have, a, have, a, have a great time. Yeah, that'll be lovely. That'll be great. I've not been invited to my sister's, right? So I'm thinking, my other brother's going to Spain, and my brother and sister are having Christmas Day together with their family and kids. And next thing, about an hour later, a text comes in from my sister going, hey, hope you're well, just checking in. Do you fancy Christmas Day in our house? Somebody's communicated in the background. <laughs> Andrew's on his fucking own for Christmas, right? So I'm like, oh, delighted, thanks so much, right? So then I ring my sister's house. I ring her phone, but her, bro her husband picks it up. And I ring him, and I, and I just wanted to know, you got to understand, if I'm going to my sister's for Christmas Day dinner, right? Dinner is different in everyone's house, but say, say the average time is 3 o'clock, you serve it up, right? But I have to come from Belfast. Yes. So I can't, I, like... You're so looking at me as I'm if it's my fault. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, I, I fucking, you, you moved that's here. A, that's, a lot, <laughs> that's a lot of driving before a big dinner, right? So I've nowhere to go Christmas Eve. So I decided I'd ring the sister to see if I could wrangle Christmas Eve as well Hi. as Christmas Day, You don't right? have to say wrangle. No, like, it's like, your sister. I'm sure she'll let you stay. You don't have to try trick her. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> pitch for you here. <laughs> Go ahead. So I ring I mean, my brother-in-law picks up the phone. I goes, Listen, um, just letting you know, what time do you want me uh, Christmas Day? And he went, and I'm thinking, he's like to me, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping he's going to say, well, when are you coming down? Mm. And I was going to go, Oh well, I have, well it all depends on I've no you know I've nowhere to go like it just if you want me like I can I can walk the dog Christmas Eve like I, I I'll do something and do you know when he turned around to me and he said if you get here for one o'clock on Christmas Day and I went oh fuck <laughs> right so, so that means I have to leave Belfast at eight a.m. Christmas Day right so then so then do you know what I did I go, oh, I've an auntie in Dundalk I'll try her right Jesus so, Christ <laughs> Jesus right. Christ so I'm now fuck raffling me. myself off. I'm now going through my phone book on who will take me on fucking Christmas Eve, right? So I go to Dubai. I fucking suss this out, right? I text my auntie in Dubai. Hey, when I was in Dubai, do you want any fake handbags? Right? So she sends me back. She goes, get me these Michael Kors and fucking Prada shit, right? So I go off to the dodgy markets in Dubai and I go into the secret rooms and I do all the dodgy fucking shit. Michael right? Hors? Michael Co Michael Hors, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the, the awful. Anyway, I tell my I tell my auntie I got her the, the, the handbag, right? And then I, she was like, oh great. I said, and then I and then I just said, So what are you doing Christmas Eve anyway? And she's like, no, and she goes, I'll be a few friends over there. I says, Oh geez, I'm around. <laughs> and she goes, Well, you come on then, so I've got fucking Christmas Eve sorted now. Yeah. Right? Don't applaud this. Don't applaud I, this behaviour. I, I got Christmas Eve sorted. So no. what I'll do, Christmas Eve, I'll drive from Belfast to Dundalk. Right. I'll go on the lash in my auntie's house. Mm. Fucking two cores bag in the bag. Lovely. Right, sort that out. Wake up Christmas morning. That cuts an hour off me drive down to Cork, right? 
I'll have be fed and watered in the aunties, and I'll get up and I'll leave uh, Dundalk at around nine o'clock on Christmas Day, and I'll get to Cork for about half twelve. I have to wait till one o'clock to arrive at the sisters. So I'll just park up outside and wait till the clearance, right? Clearance. Till I get clearance. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then I'll go into the house, then I'll have Christmas Day there, and then I'll and then on the twenty sixth I'll go to the other brother's house. Okay. And then on the twenty seventh I'll go back to the sister's house. And then on the twenty eighth I come back up here and I have three weeks off. So I finally got my Christmas Day fucking sorted. Good enough. They're delighted for you. They're truly delighted. Because for like, you. like like the first of December, I was sweating there. I was like, I'm going to end up in the Galgorum on my own. Like you know what I mean? Oh, hey, I'd have been four hundred quid for a dinner, just sitting there going, I'm looking for real love. No. Um, <laughs> I'd have been in the thermal village naked, just being like, why is everyone? Two of us, two of us, <laughs> childless, womanless, living on our own and doing d- d- comedy. Just both of us sitting in Galgorum Christmas Day like this. I'm dressed as Santa, you're dressed as the elf. Like, we're just sitting there. Like, Why am I the elf? Yeah, exactly. Like, Why like, the fuck am I the elf? <laughs> yeah. Because you're in- impotent. Uh, you've got the pointy ears. But <laughs> <laughs> you're the, you're the, you're the. So, yeah, Christmas, yeah. I'm looking forward to, to, to the dinners. <laughs> All the dinners, yeah. There's nothing better than a free dinner. That, we would all agree with that a, statement. A yeah, free yeah. dinner. Yeah, it's I think the best so too. thing. I, I, I came up with this theory. If you know families that have kids and they're like teenagers, the best time to call to them is around four thirty, five o'clock, mm-hmm. when they're doing the dinner, mm-hmm. when they're starting the dinner, right? And I have a cousin of mine. He's got two kids, and I know that they always have dinner about half five. So I call at about 10 to 5 mm-hmm. once a week. And when I call, they're all, they're, his wife or him is doing the dinner. And they're like, you'll stay for a bit of dinner. We always like, go on, so go on, yeah. And then I get the free dinner, like. Okay. You've nothing to learn, do you? Like, I fucking. No, but like, when you're my age, you've not married or nothing like that. Like, I, I fucking, you, you, we, we go hunting. Some people my age, like, would go hunting for a woman. I go hunting for a dinner, like. Hey. Do you know when I want to have dinner, what I do? What? Have dinner. Like, I don't, <laughs> I understand that, I don't like. go on a fucking Burr Grill style expedition to fucking f- <laughs> to suss out a dinner. I'm not in Jumanji. Like, I'm fucking lit- literally, I go, I'm hungry, dinner. You go, I'm hungry. Who can I fucking swindle into my life and make them as miserable as me so I can have dinner <laughs> for five minutes of their time? But it'll be a good Christmas. But you know what? Do you remember that night we... Do you know what the magic was? Do you remember when we did Dundalk? Uh, you opened for me in Dundalk. Yeah, in yeah. the spirit store. So yeah, yeah, yeah. my mum was from Dundalk, right? She's not with us anymore, my mum. But, like, uh, my mum's sisters all live in Dundalk. So I was doing, we were do, I was doing my show down in the spirit store. Aaron was on uh, opening for me. And I decided to call into my cousin, who lives on the same plot of land with his mother, which is my auntie. So I call in at about five o'clock because I have to do sound check at half six and stuff. So I try to kill an hour, get down to the dock, pop in, Got a free dinner. Of course you right? did. Of course you did. Then decided... If you ever show up to my house at five o'clock, yeah, right. you're not getting in. Right. <laughs> sure, yeah. so, yeah. Do you know what? I went to pick him up recently at his house and he just appears in the street and I still don't know which house he came out of. <laughs> it was like a magic trick. I just fucking... I appeared goes, on a I'm street. A, I'm on this road, and I'm on this road. Next thing, all of a sudden, this is, I, I'm sitting there in the car. This was playing on my phone. He just appears. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, which house did you come out of? All of them. All of them. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? like, but anyway, I, I have my dinner in my cousin's house, and they're coming to the show that night, so they're getting a taxi at like half seven or whatever. And then I walk across the garden into my auntie's just to pop in and hand over some tickets for the, for the show. And she goes, you'll stay for a bit of dinner, will you? And I went, fuck, I have two dinners now, right? But I couldn't eat the second dinner because I was full from the first dinner. Oh, man. So my auntie, dilemma. my auntie... Kids in Africa fucking starving. <laughs> You're like, I can't eat all these dinners. Right? <laughs> so I fuck never told you. my auntie that I had my dinner in her son's house five minutes ago. So I didn't eat the dinner in full. And she goes, why didn't you eat the dinner? And I goes, oh, because I'm a bit nervous about the gig, right? So then I leave. Why don't you I not go, just tell the truth? I mean, listen. Oh, sorry. I leave, right? And I, go, and I go to the gig. And then my cousin and my auntie are driving into the gig. And my auntie turns around to my cousin and goes, she's Andrew's very nervous. He didn't eat his dinner. And then my cousin would say, he had a fucking full dinner on my house before he went over to yours. <laughs> <laughs> so I got two free dinners in one night. It's great. I see. But when you see one, like, I, I, I can't cook. I don't cook. Okay. I, any particular reason? Why you've ne- Have you ever given it a try, or do you not, are you not bothered? No, I'm just not, like, like it's pretty bad. Like, my but when no- you live alone, you kind of have to find a way, because you can't fucking make a full big pot of something and then throw it out. No, you know what I mean? Portions and all that, is what I'm saying. What? What? <laughs> no. I think I'm on coke. It's, no, 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 no. This is how I live. 
This is how you live. This is how I live. I go down the shop, sniff some poppers. No, no, I go Sorry. down the shop. <laughs> if anyone calls any boss them up. I go down the shop. Mm. I, so I'll give you an example. I go to Glasgow Wednesday, right, to do a show. Why is everything a scheme with you? <laughs> it's never just... Hey, Fuck. mazel tov. I, uh, it's, all, it's all good. No, it's all good. It's okay, all good. just chill. It's okay. We'll, we'll edit this out. Don't worry about no, it. No, no, no. Keep it in. No, I prefer. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 we aren't raw. Uh, so, <laughs> tell us your scheme. <laughs> no lube, just straight no in. Lube, like, you know raw mean? dog. Raw dog. Ah, he loves that phrase. Um, the, uh, the Is that a Northern Irish Not phrase? a condom between us. I Tell me this. <laughs> or, or a future. Right. <laughs> so. <laughs> what's going on? Is some, is, is, did you drop some, You dropped it last. Oh, no, all right, okay. Oh, you're from Glasgow. Lovely, yes, yes. Right, I go, right, right. I'm going over Wednesday. I'll see you over there. <laughs> right, and, um, so I go to Glasgow Wednesday, so I have to plan. So I have no food in my house at the moment, right? So Are you I'll thinking, do, who can I get a dinner off in Glasgow? Who is? No, who have I got over there? i tell you how I, this is what I do. So I'll get up tomorrow. I'll go to Tesco's or something, and I'll buy enough food for six meals. <laughs> okay. And that gets me to Tuesday night. <laughs> yep. And then I'm gone, I gone Wednesday. Mm-hmm. There's no point in me buying for two for a week. Because I go away Wednesday, I don't come back till Saturday. Yes, I get you. There's no point in having stuff in the fridge. Do you agree with me? So I, D- buy, I, buy, yeah. I buy two days in a row. So I'll go down now, I'll buy some eggs, I'll buy six eggs. This is a great TED talk, by the way. Right. <laughs> I'll buy six eggs, a bit of salmon. So I have eggs and salmon for Monday, for Tuesday breakfast. I'll have soups for lunch. And then for dinner, I'll have roasted vegetables, some time. salmon, R- some fish. And I'll have Make uh, loops, maybe some loops. meat. And then I'll have some mashed potato in a microwave. And some poppers. And some poppers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. The other, just quickly, Sean, I forgot to hit my watch, so let me know when we hit like 40, 45. Cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. Producer Sean's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. You Shout out to producer Sean, Sean eh? Hey. He loves it. He loves it. He have, loves you, it. Uh, have you bought all your Christmas presents yet? I don't buy anything. <laughs> I just give the kids cash, like. My nieces and nephews, like, I just give them cash. You, know? you do just love dealing in cash, don't you? I oh, know, but it's... <laughs> That's a hang No, but, like, who do I buy for? So what I do is... <laughs> my sister's giving me a dinner, so I get her something, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, I buy stuff for my friends who've had babies tr- in, the, in, in this year and the other kids as well that they have. So I'll go down to Home Bargains there and I'll fucking get something for a fiver, like... <laughs> <laughs> Because you buy the babies the first year, do you then feel do you then feel an obligation to have to keep two years for is, she, is her car worker in? Where have we This is a podcast, this isn't an interactive there, comedy show. This isn't the panto at the opera house, love. Fuck's sake. The, 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 so. so what do you buy kids? Now you get two years free. <laughs> Then you get your DLA. Yeah. She's selling us insurance right And then now. you get your scratch cards <laughs> on Christmas Day. Because if you buy the babies the first year they're born, do you then feel an obligation to continue buying no, for the babies? No, what I do is, I, if a baby's born and the baby's three months old, I'll buy them clothes for 18 to 24 months. Yeah? That could say, look, that's for two years on the line. There, <laughs> You have a two-year investment. And, in then, and I go, then I go, well, there's no point me buying you something now until the child is 48 months to 60 months or four years to five years. Get you. I like so your what I do is, what I do is I'm saying, listen, I know you've got loads of clothes now, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm buying you clothes for when that child gets big. So I'm thinking of your future. But also your bank account. But I'm also thinking, I don't need to buy anything for now. So then when the child is 18 months ago, oh, that's the top I got her. <laughs> for that. So I'm yeah. buying time, right? So I don't need to buy the kids' stuff. And I'll buy my nieces and nephews, I'll give them money. And then I'll visit one or two friends and I'll just pop in for a cup of tea in Cork. But I won't bring any, I'll bring like a packet of biscuits or Here, something. Here's a, que- here's, a, here's a question. Here's a question. Who buys Andrew a gift at Christmas? Wow. <laughs> huh? Tell us who buys you. Tell us who buys you. Because here, I've got a feeling there'll okay. be an extra one this year. Huh? 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 Not from me. Uh, be from a mag as you're booking her. Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm trying to take who buys me stuff. Oh, yeah. My nieces and nephews buy me stuff. That's good. Yeah. They, they as a m- collective or do they do individual presents? Oh, my sister will buy it and they'll just hand it over. Like, uh, I, I, th- I was hoping, though, you would my get My like, aunties always buy me stuff. Uh, a couple of my mates get me some stuff. Mm. So I always get a good sort of eight to ten presents, but I give out like <laughs> stuff as well, like you know, like eight to ten. That's a good number. I, I, yeah, yeah. It's gets slow, it's slowly getting smaller. I think it was up to about twelve at one year. 
Mm. Was that but, your pick? Yeah, but <laughs> twelve I, presents. But people always say to me, Andrew, what do you want? I always say, just buy me golf balls. Because yeah. I play golf, so just if you play golf, you can just play golf. So you need balls. So How like much is a golf ball? Fifty quid for the ones I f- I want. You play fifty quid golf balls? No, but there's twelve in a pack, like oh, so pro pro v ones. So there's six quid a ball, I think. Yeah, if that math yeah, makes yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, yeah. we're learning so much today. Six quid, a six quid a ball. Yeah. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, thank you very much, no Aaron. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it. Well, who buys you stuff? Everybody. Everyone here will buy me some. Oh, will they? Guaranteed. Yeah, Give yeah. each other if you're going to buy him some. There you go now, like that. Oh, they, they, they hesitated, but eventually they brought it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, I'm, I'm the nation's sweetheart. Everyone we'll do some questions, will we, Aaron? Oh, will we do some questions? Did, yeah, did people got, write any questions? Right, we got a lot of questions. These questions. could be, this, these, this could be fucking, this could be... Shh, oh, you right. want to put in some questions, yeah? You're not putting it in, no? There you go. go ahead. Put it, in, it, yeah. it feels like a raffle, but it's shy. There you go. Let's put it in. There's right, no okay. prizes. Merry Christmas, all right. Right, shh, shh, shh. First question's from uh, another one, is it? I thought he was about to Will Smith slap you. Yeah. I swear to God. Just when I say, just, uh, keep my wife's name out your mouth. This question's from Joshua. Does Aaron still dye his hair? <laughs> Who's I, Joshua? Where's Joshua? I, f- oh, I, there he is. I will Stephen Nolan take you to court. <laughs> For slandering against my name. They have people think I dye my hair, but it's I don't. Do you not dye your hair, no? No, 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 no. No? Okay. Next question. Not this year. <laughs> dye my pubes. Right. I'm with you. I, I don't have any. I don't have any. No, if it was your name on it, I'll, I'll read your name out. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I don't know if you know how the system works. Like. Do you know when you hear your name? You know when you hear that's your, your name? That's, name. that's your name. That's your name. That's your name, right? <laughs> Fucking hell. Like. I never thought I'd have to I describe that process to someone. <laughs> Susan, is that my name? Is that my name? <laughs> Whose name is that? Is, uh, she, Susan's my name, but you said Susan, so you're talking to me. <laughs> Susan, that must be me. Is there another Susan here? Is that... Right, um, there's, there's no name on this one. Anonymous. Uh, <laughs> that's anonymous. Love the anonymous. Are there more doors or wheels in the world? Let, let's open it up for debate. If you think there's more doors in the world, give me a cheer. Okay. If you think there's more, if you think there's more wheels in the world, give me a cheer. We fucking settled it. There's more wheels. United Ireland's coming. Do you know what? Do you know what I think? Do you know what I think? I think it's a fucking no one gives a shit. So why would you be worried? Like, <laughs> there's more That's important it. times. There's like more the important times. The He's only getting eight to ten presents this year. <laughs> Sorry. Fintan. Fintan. Who's Fintan, is you? Is Fintan in the room? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fintan, sorry, my apologies. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right. doing, You're doing great. First time ever doing a live podcast, and last, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This is, a, this is a very good question, actually. Out of all your comedy friends, who is the funniest? That's a good one. Right, Aaron, you go first. Do you know what? I'm not afraid to answer this because I say it to people in conversation every day. I've never met a funnier person in and out of stand-up than Mickey Bartlett. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is a good one. All right. All right. Now, there, this is anonymous. I'll, okay. <laughs> you scribbled your name out, but I can still read your name. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, do you know who... <laughs> You're looking this way. Do you know this person? And trust me, we all know why she does the job she does. Here we go. Here we go. Your favorite Christmas present you ever received. Mine was my parents' divorce. <laughs> Mental health over there, there ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Doing your own gags and everything. Fucking right. My favorite Christmas present that I ever received, do you know what? <laughs> was my ex-girlfriend... Her <laughs> <laughs> uh, bought me a trip to the new camp in Barcelona. That's a pretty good Christmas present. Just for the tour, not a game. <laughs> Which was, I was like, that's like giving you half a gift. <laughs> you, you know, that kind of way. Like, it's like going, I got you a voucher for a restaurant, but it's breakfast, not dinner. Like, it's, and you can only get one course. Like, it's like, I'm going, but I'm not getting the same experience if there was 90,000 fans in the stadium. But it was still the best present I ever received. And we did go, and we broke up at the, on the last day. So there you go. Lovely. 
that's my life, really. Like, it's all about messes. <laughs> right, next one. This is another one. Oh. Oh, Emer. Brave, brave. Put is that their you? Name on. Is that you? Put their... Oh, Emer. Did you ever get a reply from those DMs? Well... <laughs> right. Are we talking about the ones we did on the... Are we talking about the ones we did or the No, ones... I think sure. Are you talking Well you right. know Dua Lipa's the, you know Dua Lipa saw his one. Ah look, we're we're in the good Michelle O'Neill has blocked me. <laughs> oh has she actually? Yeah. This is news to me. Oh Andrew. We did it! We fucking did it! Yeah! We can stop the podcast. We can stop the pod. How do you feel about that? Heartbroken? I found out where she lives and um <laughs> I tell you, somebody fucking hard to block me again. <laughs> <laughs> Class. She no. hasn't blocked me. She just won't reply. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think we're getting close to it, though, because we've had a Sinn Féin representative uh, contact me. Um, <laughs> by uh, No, true. And he said, can you stop trying to contact Michelle? And I thought, you know what? No contact. This contact is better than no contact. Do you know what I mean? So, right. But you know, one guy messaged me and he said, uh, it's, in the, it's a question they'll ask, but it, it doesn't seem likely because of what we do. Um, I don't think she trusts us. Like, she's, like, but I said, I don't want to do any politics. I want to interview Michelle because she was born in Cork. I want to interview her. I want to ask her, what's she watching on Netflix? What's her best hangover cure? Um, you know, is she looking for real love? Like... Um, <laughs> What is, oh, I what wonder is, why she is, blocked you. What is it that she's looking for? Um, did you get any replies? We know Cher and none of them did reply uh, to Yeah, us. so on the podcast, me and Andrew once upon a time messaged Cher. Uh, you say, how, how do you, hold on, did I say it weird because I'm from West Belfast? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Cher. Sure. Sure. How, 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 how do you say it properly? Cher? Cher. 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 We messaged Cher and, uh, <laughs> and just basically said, listen, if you're up for a bit of fucking fingering or Finger. what, like... <laughs> With your fucking menopausal puss, we will. <laughs> Sean, can you edit that out, please? We will. Sean, keep it in. Uh, we will. We'll fucking give her a wee rattle, you know. So. <laughs> and uh, you'll be you'll be surprised to know she didn't reply. So we're it's we'll work on it next year. She, uh, thank you. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the question. Next question is, are you currently looking for a new co-host? Right? Oh, right. <laughs> Here. Here. The, the answer is, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is a great question. This is from Caitlin. What's the strangest thing that's ever happened to you at a comedy gig? Oh, have, oh, have I told you the story about this, the hen party in England? Did no, I, ever, I, never told that story. I don't think so. Oh, my God, this is the best one, right? Okay. I'm doing a gig in England. I'm doing a gig in England, right? And uh, I'm hosting the show. So imagine if you're like hosting the Empire or whatever. Like that. I go out. There's like a couple of lads there and there's like a couple there. And I walk out and I'm like, hello, welcome to the show. Blah, blah, blah. It's going to be great. And then I say to this guy, I say, what's your name? And he goes, oh, my name's John. And I'm like, hiya. And then I'm like, oh, is that your wife or your girlfriend? And next thing, all of a sudden, they just shut down. They're not like looking at me. They're giving me no energy. And I'm thinking, oh, God, they're a bit... They don't, they don't want to interact. That's totally fine. I respect that. And, and I was like, oh, you don't like talking to an Irish guy? Okay, that's fine. Since you've left Europe. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> and I move along the chain. I, and eventually, I bring on the first act, which was a comedian called Ivo Graham. So then it goes to the interval, and I go backstage. Uh, and the interval uh, happens. Uh, next thing you know, there's a knock on the door. And it's security. And security come in, and the guy goes, uh, Andrew, yeah, can I just have a quick word with you? And I went, why? He goes, there's been an incident uh, in, the, in, in the gig. I was like, well, I didn't, I didn't do anything. <laughs> like, you know, I just came here looking for love. And like, I, um, <laughs> I didn't do anything, right? So this is what happens. So the guy that's sitting there, I talk to him. He answers one or two questions. And then I realized it's a no-go area. So that's perfectly fine. But at the very back of the room, there's about maybe, there's maybe about 250 people at the gig. There's a hen party. And there's about six or seven girls there. And one of the girls in the hen party recognizes him. Right? That guy that's sitting at the front is married to her friend. So that guy is like cheating. And he's basically out with a new girl. And in the comedy clubs in England, what they do is they sit couples at the front. Okay? And they put the big groups at the back. So what's happened is after the first comedian, the audience, the, the hen party come to the front of the stage. I don't see this because I'm backstage, so I have a fucking clue. So 220 people are watching this. I'm seeing nothing. I don't have a clue, right? 
And they confront them. There's, now, there's no fight, there's nothing, but there's a bit of a shouting anyway. They all get up and the security come over and they all leave. Not, no glasses were smashed or whatever like that. So I have to go back out, right, at the start of the second half, not knowing, knowing that, that I know something's happened. They've all seen it, but I haven't seen it, right? So I walk back out and there's just this empty two chairs and there's, there's no Hindu at the back of the room. And I just walk out and I go, anything, anything happened in the break there at all? Um, <laughs> right? <laughs> Anyone want to talk about anything? And the uh, place just erupts, right? So then we decided to fill it in memory of the two people that were there, right? So we got another couple to come and sit, and then as they sat there, we pretended that they were having an affair, right? And I just went on and on and on. And that is the straight... Now, I still don't know whatever happened to them, or what happened with the Hindu or that guy, but that happened all... That was the strangest thing that's ever happened that I never saw at my own gig. Wow. That's a Mad. great story. Mad, isn't it? What's the strangest thing that happened to you? Oh, the Meg didn't work once. <laughs> <laughs> For 20 minutes. I just don't think they were laughing at your jokes, mate. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Right, your last said. question. Uh, last question we have here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, this we have one it. more? And then we're going, how do we... Vis- you dirty bastards. No, now, on. if this, this is, is from, inappropriate... This is from Aaron Butler. It's from, someone's this, written Aaron someone's Butler. Someone's wrote my name here. Now, what, what did I apparently okay. say? And do you know what? Do you know what? That is not... The question to me is, did you get your... <laughs> did you get off with someone in Dubai? Oh. No, I didn't, because they wouldn't listen. I was whinging about a lot of things to people, and they wouldn't listen oh, to me. Oh, yeah, there's no chance. There is no chance Every time I talk to a girl, I was like, hi, how are you? Do you know how much the price of the pints are here? Like, yeah, yeah, She was like... I paid like, 14 euro, and they're looking at me going, well, you wouldn't believe the weather at home now is very bad, you know? Yeah. Like, she was like, if I give you a Sunday dinner, will you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> you were like, yes, I will. That's what I'm looking. So uh, what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we got our... Uh, special, we got. We also got. Where's 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 da, where's, where's Darren? <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. You had a little dementia there for a second. Where, 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 where's Darren? Where's Darren? Step into the light, Darren. Step into the light. Do you remember that night at Lamfrey's when Jordan was on? Tell him the story about right. this. Jordan Robinson, who's a brilliant comedian, who, was, who you saw him earlier, he's brilliant, right? I didn't know this at the time. No, 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 time. right. So Jordan, we're doing Lavery's, Andrew's MC, and I'm on Jordan, who's seen earlier. He's on, obviously, Jordan does a bit about having the essential tremor, the Parkinson's and stuff like that. Andrew had went to the toilet during that bit, came back after, whispered in my ear, going, fuck, he's real nervous tonight, isn't he? Look at the shakes of him. <laughs> didn't know. And I went, you do know he has Parkinson's. And he thought I was joking and went, that's a good one, you should tell him that. And I was like, no, he has fully <laughs> blown <laughs> Parkinson's. And then we kissed him. And it's all, <laughs> and it's all good now. It's all good now. He's such a funny, but I just did, I didn't know. I did miss that bit. I was like, he's a bit nervous, isn't he? Like, I just didn't know. <laughs> like, you know. Ah, anyway. sure. Darren's got a couple of questions he wants to ask us. He wants to ask us five questions. We're going to do a little, uh, see who knows more about Ireland. We're going to have Ireland. a quiz off here, I'm guys. from the south and he's from the north, right? So, we're, you know, do you want to... Oh, he could come yeah, up, come couldn't on he? Up. Yeah, 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 he used the mic here, right? Yeah, yeah. Darren so Matthews, we'll everybody, give him a round of applause. applause in. Darren Matthews. So we're going to see who knows more about this island because somebody from the south or somebody from here. Yes. Can, now, we've got to have some different teams here. If you're on Team Andrew, give him a cheer. If you're on my team, give me a cheer. Yeah, come on. That's what I like to hear. It's like his we fucking fan club here tonight, like, yeah, isn't the, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your podcast. The other uh, darn... Go. I know, I'm just setting this up for Willie. Uh, I think, as you all know from listening to the podcast, these two know fuck all about nothing, so... Uh, that is true. This should be good. It's very I've, true. I've, I've smashed three phones listening to you trying to do geography. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, how it's going to work is I'm going to ask five uh, questions. This quiz is called What County? So there's a 1 in 32 chance you might get one of them right. Okay. Uh, I, don't mean, you, I only know four. If Cork. Fucking <laughs> Cork. If, if you know the answer, shout your name. Man right. in the front, you're my referee. You tell me who goes first, okay? Fucking Michael O, good man. All right, five questions. Oak means junior, doesn't it? Young. Young. Did you say black? <laughs> oh. I, I'm hearing things. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought. I, I thought he was like young and black. That is what Oak means. <laughs> Arnog. Uh, the, the, okay. Uh, all right. Sorry, Darren. The, the on, quiz may commence. Right, it's uh, it's lovely to be here. Sean, edit me out of this. Um, <laughs> Pixelate him. <clears throat> He's ready. Yeah, yeah. Call your name when you, when you know. Uh, no conferring, please. No shouting out until we pass it to the audience. Ladies and gentlemen. 
What county was Stormont statue Edward Carson from? Andrew. Down. Wrong. Got okay. Check. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Uh, Aaron, uh, that's me just buzzing in. Uh, the, 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 uh, say his name again, Darren. <clears throat> what county was Edward Carson from? Carson. Fuck. Was that the right answer? No. <laughs> Fuck up you as well. Uh, I will go for Antrim. Is incorrect. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen of the audience, does anyone know where Edward Carson was from? Dublin. He was a fucking Jack Hane. You're right, he's from Dublin. Yay. Yeah. Tracer. Not a one he is. Tracer. All right. Mm. Question two. What Ulster County, because you need clues, you fuck. Ulster County. <laughs> what, what Ulster County? What the fuck's Ulster? Uh, I only know it as the occupied six, mate. No, no, no. You're not going to get this right then. <laughs> Michelle O'Neill's never come along now. now. Uh, I, know, I only know the free 26. <laughs> what Ulster County was the first on the island of Ireland to have a railway, but now has none? Arn. Fermanagh? No. Incorrect. No. Right, you, you have a bye ball. Think, you think. Um, but don't, because that's dead air, and that's part of the podcast. Incorrect also. Man with his hand up in the audience? Yeah. Uh, also incorrect, cause, just because you're from Donny... Uh, what, what are you... What? No? At the back? No, also, Donegal. bingo, it's Donegal. Fuck. We're all terrible this game. Fuck. Dang, we're... we're all nil, right. nil. This still, is like a penalty shootout. Still nil, nil. All right, right. let's go. Hey, here we go. Okay. Which Connex County has the shortest county coastline on the island of Ireland? Arne. Andrew. Who went first? Arne. Arne. Uh, Wicklow. Wicklow's in, Wicklow's in Leinster, but okay. <laughs> Sligo. Incorrect, but very close. You got another chance. Uh, whack, uh, 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 killed her. <laughs> <laughs> also in Leinster. Andrew, you're bound to have this. This is in the 26. Leitrim, yes, 1-0. One 1-0. Nil. One nil. Right, go fourth one, fourth one. Thank God. Uh, I'm one right. <laughs> Okay. What county in the north was the penalty kick invented? Arn. Arma. Correct, 1-1. One, one. Come on! Come on! Fuck yeah! <clears throat> this is the decider. There, there you go. Yeah, penalty kick invented 1890 by William McCrum and Milford like, County I feel, Armagh. I feel like you're going to do a Harry Kane now on this. <laughs> <laughs> you do sort of look like a movie, man. Oh, do I? Yeah, I Some, Someone so. else I look like as well, isn't it? Oh, I, I, sorry, I thought you meant you were going to develop a stutter. Okay. Um, oh, no, no, no. Okay, last question. This one, one. This is a decider because I haven't written any more. Jesus Christ. What county was the last to win the hurling and GA football All Ireland? Andrew Dublin? Cork. Yes, it's two one. Right. See you later, mate. Yeah, yeah. You can take down your pipe and smoke it. Oh, I hear this. <laughs>